My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, indeed every single one of us is an author, whether we agree or not. We are responsible to be writing a certain book. And that book is a book that we will be shocked and surprised when we read it ourselves, although we would have authored it. And by this, what I mean is every single movement of ours, we know, is written down. So I am the one responsible for what is being written. Whatever I say is written. I am responsible. If I don't say it, it's not written. If I say it, it's written. Whatever I do is written down. So every one of us authors our own book. And this is why Allah says, don't blame anyone but yourself. When you read your own book, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ تَأْتِي كُلُّ نَفْسٍ تُجَادِلُ عَنْ نَفْسِهَا On that day, each soul shall come defending itself, fight, fighting its own case. Because each person will be given his or her book, and each one will be told, read your book. Allah says, you are sufficient yourself as your own accountant for your deeds. Here's your book. Read your own book. So this is why we say, never be deceived, my brothers and sisters, by thinking that what I have done or is not going to be recorded or by thinking what is recorded is something that I did not do. It is definitely done. And why we need to constantly speak about this is because on a daily basis we become forgetful that I'm authoring a booklet. I'm engraving it into my book. My book is being written and in such a way that it will be held for me or against me very, very soon. So why is it that we do not increase within our books that which will be beneficial for me and you? Thank you. One of them is an act of charity, sadaqa. If you are to engage in an act of charity, it's written and recorded down how much you've given. And even if it is not material, because sadaqah is not restricted to monetary donations. But the sadaqah also includes that any form of goodness that you may have assisted not only human beings with, but any creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with is an act of charity. We know that people who assist animals as well, that is an act of charity. You have come to the rescue of a certain animal somehow, whether it is the quenching of a thirst or whatever else, it is an act of charity. And we as Muslimin believe that yes, we will indeed engage in acts of mercy towards animals, but we must realize in Islam we prioritize. Prioritize meaning human beings come before animals. So if two are drowning, a dog and a human being, we should be saving the human being before the dog. If we manage to save both, no one ala no. I see people are looking at me as though if that's my enemy, I'd rather save a dog. Allah safeguard us. My brothers and sisters, the reality is we should be saving both human and animal, but first human beings and then animals. So let's not be mistaken with that one. Some people think Islam does not teach prevention of cruelty to animals. Islam is what brought about prevention of cruelty to animals. Muhammad وسلم, came, he liberated a woman, and he actually gave animals rights. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So the book that is being written, there is something very interesting about that book. And that is, you have for as long as you are breathing, still a great amount of control over what appears in your book. Did you know that? Subhanallah. So once you've written, it's engraved. But the engraving can still be changed for as long as you are breathing. And this comes with mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, sometimes, I know when we were young, we used to have erasers sometimes that 
when you write something and you rub it out, basically, there is still a mark left there in the background. <laughs> Someone can tell that this was rewritten. Sometimes you have tipex. You use that tipex and what happens, there is a blot. So people know you wrote something and now you wrote something else on top of it. And especially when you have a price at your shop, it says $4.99 and inflation makes it $4.999. You can add another 9 at the end and people know the decimal has moved. When it comes to your deeds, no one knows. Even Allah makes the angels forget or the witnesses that bear witness like the walls and the carpets and perhaps you know the, the floors and that where a sin was committed it was written it can be deleted totally and completely you're alive you are the author of your book you're going to come with that booklet on your deathbed subhanallah that's your final book you have the final revised edition if you want to call it or you were given a chance to revise it, to look at it and to, you know, continue changing here and there. But it was up to you. And this is why we speak about it today. Because my brothers and sisters, we have done deeds. A lot of us have done a lot of good deeds. They are in our book. They are not going to be wasted. But they may be, if we are foolish, wasted. <coughs> How can a person become foolish? By having more bad deeds than good. So you have a lot of good deeds in your book. But that's up to page number 500 and the rest of the thousand pages remaining all evil deeds this man did this this man did that and the worst of deeds don't be mistaken point number one to associate partnership with allah worst worst deed that could be there because allah says i can forgive everything but there is one thing i promise not to forgive and that is when you've associated partnership with me and you have not sought forgiveness which means you did not write write that book properly by deleting that association of partnership through repentance, then I promise that I won't forgive. Now, this is serious because Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. But sometimes, even if a person is very, very kind and very easygoing, if you keep on irritating a person, they will become irritated with you. No matter how, you know, they say this man has no temper. But if you keep on irritating, keep on irritating, the temper at some stage will come. Allah's example is far different from that example we've just given you now. Allah has the highest of examples. But if Allah is most forgiving, most merciful, and He is saying, this I won't forgive, that means it must be something serious. So be on the lookout for that type of scratch in your book, number one. Number two is, when we have wronged fellow human beings, we are spelling disaster. So if I have backbitten about you, perhaps cheated you, perhaps sworn at you, eaten one of your rights, perhaps spread rumor about you, slandered and so on. What happens is, I have wronged you. In order to get my book in order, I need you and your involvement. And I need you to help me erase it. The eraser of that statement is in your pocket, not mine. And you are not most forgiving, most merciful. So it's going to be a disaster. And this is why we say, when you have wronged against the most forgiving, most merciful, you have a chance because he is looking for any excuse to forgive you. But when you have wronged against people who are not most forgiving, not most merciful, because they are human beings, it's not the creator. In that case, you are actually putting yourself into red territory. And this is why we say, when you have your booklet, you will erase. But to erase some of it, you need a special rubber, a special eraser, subhanAllah. So now you need to go to a human being and say, look, brother, I've heard, please forgive me, and, and so on. And then you find that that booklet will become clean once again. And you hold your booklet. Your booklet is with you at all times. And the angels keep writing, whether you like it or not. مَا يَلْفِضُ مِن قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Man does not utter a single word except there are those who are taking record of it. The angels are taking a record. They are on the left and on the right. Everything is written, subhanallah. So when you have wronged a fellow human being, what may happen is sometimes people say, I don't forgive you. I don't forgive you. So in that case, you arrive with that on your book, on the day of judgment, and the person is brought in front of you or the group of people are brought in front of you. And what is looked at? Let me explain what is looked at. Your good deeds are looked at and your bad deeds are looked at. And to clear your bad deeds, you need to make a payment. What type of currency is going to be used on that day? The currency of deeds, al-a'mal, nothing else. Your deeds are going to be used. So 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask, do you forgive this man? The man says, no, because on that day, he will also need something to enter paradise. Everyone is going to be searching for anything they can get hold of so that they can go to paradise. So now that when, when you are told that you have wronged this person and they are not accepting forgiveness, you need to make a payment equivalent to the damage you have caused in deeds. So now your booklet, the deeds, the good deeds go from this particular, from your book to that person's book. And this is how people end up losing pages of good deeds. So it is exactly like a few pages went missing from my book. Why? Because I did so many good deeds in my life and I can't find the page. You know, like you, you, for example, you arrive in Great Britain and they tell you, where is your visa? And you say, it's somewhere in my passport. And you're now turning the pages and you find there's a page missing. What happens? I don't even want to begin to explain the feeling. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So this visa of entry into paradise, you find the page missing because you wronged someone else. Wallahi, it's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. And then what happens? The deed goes to him. And then there is another person. The deed goes to that one. And if you wrong the third one, the deed goes to that one. May Allah protect us. The hadith makes mention of a person who loses all his good pages. They're all gone. And where did they go? They went to someone or all sorts of people who were wrong. And you know what? There's still a line of people. And that line of people, we've wronged them. And I don't have any more good deeds. And this is my book. My book, the pages are going one by one. So now the bad pages from their books are torn and given to us. So his bad page comes to me, this one, that is a settlement on the day of judgment. This is how things will be settled. Things are settled through your deeds, either good deeds or bad deeds. So you get someone's good deeds or they get your good deeds and vice versa. You may get someone's bad deeds or they may get your bad deeds. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, prepare for the day when your wealth and your children will not help you. Not at all. Your book, you have it right now, you have got it. Try and make sure you've written it properly. It's your writing. Don't be like those who are shocked on the day of judgment when they come and they are given their own book and they are told, read your book. And when they read it, they are shocked. Is this, the, is this what I did? And Allah says, we gave you an opportunity to engage in tawbah whilst you were breathing. Why didn't you do that? This is why we constantly make mention of a hadith. Tuba liman wujida fi sahifatihi istighfaran kathira. Give good news to he upon whose pages lots of istighfar is found. Lots of tawbah, lots of repentance is found. So on your pages today, why don't you write a lot of istighfar? Why don't you repent every day? So every day you start off with, I seek your forgiveness, O oh Allah. In the afternoon on your page it's written, I seek your forgiveness. So every page of every day, you have forgiveness, repenting at the top, in the middle, somewhere near the bottom, and right at the bottom. Isn't that good news? Allah says, give good news to those type of people. So now when, when the punishment is about to overtake you, these little statements strewn all over your pages will come to your rescue. When Allah sees it, He may say, Oh my worshipper, I am the most forgiving, most merciful. You ask my forgiveness, here it is. You may proceed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good deeds. One more point I'd like to make mention of before we continue. And that is, every one of us should maximize the good deeds we have done on a daily basis. Wallahi, we are guilty of losing focus. I think all of us, we can say that the focus we are supposed to be having sometimes dwindles. Sometimes we shift aside this way and that way. We don't realize that when your deeds and when your page for that day is full of as many good deeds as you can, and you are conscious of it, asking yourself, how many good deeds did I do between 6 o'clock in the morning and right now? What did I do that I am proud of on my page? Ask yourself, here and now, answer your question within your heart. What did I do from the morning to now that I would be proud of to be on my page? The reality is, can I give you the answer of the majority of us, myself included? We didn't even think of it. That's the answer. We didn't even really think of it. To be honest, now that you're coming to sit and you think, you say, inshallah, I'll do this afternoon, I'll pack away five good things. Wallahi, there is a shortage of ideas in our minds sometimes as to what good deeds should I do. So Allah says, hang on, read your salah, that's good. You know, engage in istighfar, stay out of interfering in other people's lives. It's a very, very good deal. For you to be able to protect yourself from sin is a bonus. Do you know why it's a bonus? Let me explain the most beautiful explanation I've heard. Is when you fulfill good deeds, when you, meaning when you engage in obligation, it is a payment to paradise. So if I fulfill my salah now, I'm paying for paradise. If I, for example, fulfill my asr and whatever is farad on me, I'm paying for paradise. 
But if I abstain from prohibition, that's a bonus. Why is it a bonus? Allah gave you a gift by making that sin accessible to you. That was the gift. So when sin is accessible to you, that's the only time you can abstain from it, saying that I did a good deed. What was the good deed you did? Adultery was so easily accessible, but I stayed away. That's now a good deed. But for you to stay away from adultery because it's not accessible, that's no big deal. That's nothing. It wasn't even there. This is why we say in countries and societies where sin is left, right and center, if you still stay straight, you get a far greater reward than countries where that sin is not even accessible. When your pornography is accessible on your phone and you just delete or you, you block the page and you don't do it, that is now called abstaining from prohibition. But when you're in a country where you cannot access it at all, there is no big deal for having stayed away from it because it will then count according to your intention. You know, some people are looking for a loophole. Come what may, we want to commit a sin. Allah says, you know what? We would have given you a bonus by making sin accessible for you in order to give you an opportunity to stay away from it so that you can achieve closeness to us and write something huge in your book. But we did not make it accessible to you and still you want it in order to commit it. That is a major sin. Allahu Akbar. Meaning it's, it's a crime to be thinking in that direction. So this is why my brothers and sisters, remember, whenever there is a sin that comes past you, that is easy to commit, whether it is in a business deal, whether it is with the opposite sex, whether it is the interference in the, of the life of someone and so on, those type of sins, subhanallah, they are opportunities from Allah given to you to prove your metal as a Muslim. Opportunities given from Allah to you to get a bonus payment. A few days ago, I spoke one of the lectures I said, and some of the youngsters enjoyed the example. You know, when we were young, we had a computer game called Pac-Man. I don't know, it must be still available. Where a little yellow gadget begins to eat the fruits and begins to eat little items and moves up the labyrinth, up and down, and you go on. After a while, you find a bonus. There's like a fruit. If you eat this, you get 500 points. And after, so now you quickly run for it because at a while it disappears. That is a game. We will run for the bonuses for that particular game because we want to win. Allah says, well, when we have put haram around you, for you to abstain from it is your bonus. You get 500 free points. Doing what? I didn't do anything. All I did was I stayed away. Are you following what we are saying? The only thing I did was I just stayed away. I looked down and I carried on and I didn't follow through. So what effort was required was actually nil. So much so that an effort would be required to commit a sin. And Allah says, all you got to do, we're going to put it all around you, left, right and center, so enticing, you just stay away and that's your bonus. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Look at how merciful our Rabb is. And Allah says, that will be written in your book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us our books. If we look at the books on the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the books that will be given to us, two directions. Either right hand or the left hand. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ هَاؤُمُ قُرَأُوا كِتَابِيَ As for he who receives his book in his right hand, immediately, he will be happy, he will be excited, and he will say, Oh, read my book. Wow, this is my book. Because he's got it on his right hand. The minute the book is coming towards the person's right, he will start getting excited. And he will be happy because he knows what I've engraved through the years was worth it. It's my own book and I have not done bad. Subhanallah. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ As for the one who receives his book in his left hand, he will say, oh, I wish I didn't even get my book. Allahu Akbar. It reminds me of examination results. A person whose parents sweat in order to pay the fee, and then you go to varsity and first year, you fail all your subjects, it's an embarrassment. Allahu Akbar. What an embarrassment. But wallahi, that is so short-lived because you can repeat. There, when you get to the Akhirah, then there is no repetition. No repetition. Like Allah says, those people who say, we want to go back. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, such people who have been oppressors, at that point, 
they would want to go back saying, Oh Allah, send us back. We want to do good deeds now. You see, we want to write something good in our books. And Allah says, No, it's just a statement they're uttering from their mouths. In another place in the Quran, Allah says, Even if we sent them back, they would repeat exactly the same deeds and come back again. So my brothers and sisters, the point of encouragement I have for myself and yourselves today, be conscious throughout the day, every day of a book that you are going to present. Just be conscious of it and tell yourself, what have I done in terms of good? Today, wallahi, people are worried when you have to give accounts to the tax man. But people are not worried when accounts are being taken. And so it's much easier to prepare the accounts to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you abstain from prohibition and Pack away as many good deeds. When you read Sunnah Salah, Nafil Salah, extra Quran, and all those good deeds, charities and so on, helping your parents and what have you, you are packing away so many good deeds, engraving them in your book. Don't give them away as we've explained. Inshallah, we hope that Allah grant us all Jannah and make us conscious of good deeds. And may we forgive one another for whatever shortcomings we may have. Because each one of us will be in lots and lots of... Uh, Concern on the day of judgment to say the least and each one of us would like to earn paradise We hope we can meet there the same way we constantly meet here in the dunya